This gentleman. The, the early the early data on um, consumers, if, if we're all consumers of health care, all right, and I think it's reasonable to call us consumers, um, the early returns on consumers populating what are called personal health records, or PHRs, and taking responsibility for keeping that information is actually not very good. It turns out that um, most people won't keep their medical records up, uh, their own personal medical records up. and so. We really do rely upon our providers to feed information into a repository of some sort. Um, and there are at least a thousand different efforts going on in this country now to try and find um, the, the practical solution to that problem where people will actually uh, cooperate and assist in the collection of their medical data because it's. Um, it's potentially a gold mine for certain folks that want to reach those consumers. So why don't we take uh, one or two more questions and then we'll adjourn the formal part of the program and invite everyone to stay and have some refreshments and I'm sure that our speakers would be happy to uh, talk for a few minutes uh, with anyone who uh, would like to speak with them. So this gentleman. Yeah, you mentioned Stanford was a level one trauma center. What are some of the other categories, and what's the difference between, say, a level one and level two, or whatever it is? Um, yeah, level, level one, it, it really has to do with what resources you have immediately available in the house, in the hospital at, at one time to take care of trauma patients. There's basically three levels of trauma center designation, one, two, and three. Uh, for example, Stanford and, and Valley Medical Center are level one. Regional Medical Center is a level two trauma center. Um, and it really just has to do with, again, what subspecialties you have available. Um, they all have to have general surgical uh, specialists available to handle trauma patients. Uh, the, feel, the, the whole idea is to be able to get people to the operating room quickly if necessary. The, the big difference between one and two um, is the research and education component. Yeah. So uh, a level one and a level, level two are roughly equivalent in terms of the clinical care that they can render. But a level one center, such as Stanford is, um, has an even greater devotion to um, trauma care by virtue of the fact that they um, dispense resources associated with education, training, uh, research, et cetera. It's not just having the doctors there, but it's actually having an active participation. But between two and three is a drop off, because at three, there is not the same requirement for having the same in-house services. You can have certain services on call. Um, and on-call is sometimes not good enough. Well, let's say heart attacks or auto accidents, level one. So you're saying level one and two would handle, say, both heart attacks and auto accidents. Yes. But level three? Level three would be less able to manage that. And that's, that's more the situation um, that you would encounter um, in a rural environment. Okay, last, last question in the back corner. You mentioned the uh, statistics about the overall loss of hospital beds and ER rooms uh, nationwide. <clears throat> and uh, I have some suspicion that that's, of course, due to adverse uh, cost containment pressures from insurance and whatnot. How is this type of thing affecting your abilities to keep up with the population increase needs? Well, it's, um, you know, it's, uh, they're both working against each other. You know, I mean, we're, um, I think if we had the same number of beds and, and space, we'd be busier and busier um, because the expectations of patients um, are increasing. I mean, it, it's not a secret. I mean, we can do more for people. We know that early in interventions are more important. The population is aging, okay, so there are more people that need services. Um, and so whenever a facility closes, I think Los Angeles is probably the most dramatic example, you know, when a, there are some big hospitals in Los Angeles that closed precipitously and that absolutely overwhelmed and inundated um, their emergency care systems. Uh, the other hospitals were instantaneously overwhelmed and it put patients in jeopardy. Um, we fortunately um, have been, we, we've had a few hospital closures in our catchment area, but we've been better able to prepare for it because we had notice and the rest of the county and the region geared up to be able to deal, to deal with that. Um, but if, for instance, Valley Medical Center um, decided they were going to close in a week, uh, we'd have a big problem. 
So thank you all so much for coming. Um, we so appreciate your interest and that you would take the time to come and uh, listen and learn with us tonight. I think it's been an incredibly informative evening, eye-opening for all of us. And thanks again to our speakers. I hope you'll enjoy some refreshments and that you'll come back and see us in September. Thank you.